Hey everyone, welcome back. This is a second video in a series that I'm doing about managing VFX workflows in editorial, specifically around a work in progress short film that I'm working on right now. In the first video, I talked about the importance of adding VFX descriptions as a note in your timeline and how to do that using the title tool in Avid. In this video, we're going to move on to the next step, which is creating VFX numbers or VFX IDs for each of your VFX shots. So here we go. Assigning VFX numbers or VFX IDs, it's going to be a really key step in managing your VFX workflows. Ideally, you'd be assigning VFX IDs in conjunction with your VFX supervisor or VFX pr producer or your vendors or something like that. Like you would have a conversation with them, you would talk about what the naming convention is going to be that you would want and how you want to label your VFX shots. If you're in a situation where you don't have that, you aren't working with those people, or maybe you're managing it all yourself, there are some pretty simple rules that you can put together. So here are some of my favorite rules for how to properly create VFX IDs for your project. Number one, have an acronym for your show. It could be a three letter acronym, a four letter acronym, or it can be something alphanumeric, letters and numbers. In the case of my particular film that I'm working on, I can't tell you what it's called, but as you can maybe see from some of the overlays that I've got in various places, the acronym that I'm using for this is HMS. And that's just is based on the title of the actual film. So you can use something like that that's based on your title. If you're working on an episodic program, you might want to have something that's like two or three letters and then a number to demonstrate the episode numbers that you're working on. Picking a short and sweet acronym is really best practice. So that's step one. Step two is then you want to actually start putting the acronym along with some numbers for the shots. Now, when you're creating these labels, the important thing that you want to do is you want to avoid any kind of symbols that are going to be construed by a computer program as math. And by that, I mean no dashes, no plus signs, no slashes, no asterisks, no other special characters like ampersands or brackets or anything else that any kind of computer software could consider to be some kind of mathematical function or formula. The safest things to use are alphanumerics, so letters, numbers, and you can use an underscore. And that is pretty much the only characters that you're going to want to use. The next step is you want to actually assign numbers to each shot, and you can do that in a number of ways. You can start off at the beginning of your show and just start labeling, like the first shot is number one, the next shot is number two, and so on all the way up to the end of your show. Or you can also use scene numbers. So if you're working on a scripted program, like this particular short film that I'm working for on is scripted. So we have a script that we refer to and we have scene numbers. So what we're actually doing is we're using three different parts of our VFX ID. We have our acronym, then we have a scene number, and then we have a shot number. So that way you can tell just by looking at it kind of what scene it is and what part of the film it is. If you don't have scene numbers, you can just do your acronym plus a shot number. The other thing to keep in mind when you're numbering your shots is, as you can see here in my examples, I'm not doing shot 001002003. I've done shot 010, 020, 030, and so on. And this is to allow for padding because especially when you're working with VFX on a show that's not locked yet, but even if their show is locked, you want to leave room for people to be able to add additional shots in between the shots that you've already labeled. You never know when a shot that you previously thought wasn't going to need visual effects suddenly is for some reason that you couldn't have predicted. There's a creative change or somebody like noticed that there's a camera reflection that they never saw before and now they have to remove it. This happens all the time. So you definitely want to be able to leave room to add additional numbers in between your pre-existing numbers. So I've added padding so that if in between 010 and 020 somebody realizes there needs to be another VFX shot, I can add 011, 012, 013, all the way up to 019. So I actually have room to add nine extra shots in between these two. And you can even go farther with this. Like a lot of bigger shows and bigger projects will have padding where they can add up to like 99 extra VFX shots. So they'll use like 0, 0100, 0, 0200, and so on. So obviously you have to take a look at your particular situation, your particular project, and decide for yourself what the best way of labeling the VFX is going to be. But I think if you follow some of these rules, it can be really helpful in making sure that you don't get caught out later on and have to like rejumble or renumber everything. So in my case for this film, I actually sent a copy of the film, like I just as a quick time file, to the VFX supervisor and she watched it, looked at all of my little descriptions that I had written, created a spreadsheet, and then numbered everything per the naming convention that she wanted. So I received the numbering information from the VFX supervisor. If you don't have somebody that's doing that for you, 
that's something that you should do yourself and that should exist in a spreadsheet outside of your nonlinear editor. I'm not going to show you in this video how to create a Google sheet or a Excel spreadsheet uh, of a VFX list. But at some point in the future, if you're interested in seeing what a VFX list can look like in Excel, um, then, you know, make a note in the comments, let me know, and I can do a little clip on that for sure. But what I am going to show you today is how I put those numbers and that information into Avid so that it remains a part of the video signal and that everybody who's watching the cut can access that information. So the next step from here is to put them into the timeline. And you can do that in a couple of different ways. Some people like to do it with the title tool, which I can easily do. I can create a new title and say, okay, this is gonna be, for example, our VFX number. And maybe I'll put it in the bottom right corner like this. I'll call it VFX ID. And I'm gonna create a new video track for that. I always name my video tracks. It's really important to keep yourself organized. Call this VFX IDs. And I can literally just put that title on top of this one right here. Boom. So I have both the description of the VFX and I can see the number that I created. So you could do it that way. You can put another row of titles all the way across the row that you already have. In my case, what I did actually for this project is that I decided instead of using the title tool that I would use the Avid subcap tool, which I found to just be like a few clicks easier to change the numbers on. Opening up the title tool just takes a certain number of clicks to open and select and type and close. And I just found that when you're doing it for a hundred VFX shots, it can get really, really tedious. So I just thought it was a little bit easier. It was fewer clicks to use the Avid subcap tool. So the subcap tool is part of the effects palette. It's under generator and very similar to the time code burn in or a filler or a mask. You can just literally drag it down onto the timeline. So that's what I did. I just dragged one big fat one onto the timeline. And then, so I've got this one, it covers everything. Then I open up the settings for the effect and I wrote like my first ta caption text, which is going to be what the first number is. And then I sort of messed around with it a little bit. So um, you can see like over here on the monitor, it's really small. So I just going to adjust the sizing and the position to be in a place that I want it to be. I'm also going to adjust the font and the alignment. So there you go. I've created a number in the corner. Now I'm going to close that down and now obviously that same number right now is going to show up across the entire movie, which is not what we want. But then what my workflow was is I just went in and made edits at each location where it's a new VFX shot and change the number. I'm not going to lie. It's a slow and tedious process regardless of which way you do it, but it's really, really important that you're diligent and that you get all of the VFX numbers in that they accurately reflect your VFX list, that you don't have any duplicate numbers, that you've caught all of your VFX shots. So now I'm going to show you what it looks like. I have the sequence already completed. As you can see, I've got this row with the VFX IDs and then every single shot, I've got them stacked on top of each other. So I've got the note and the ID number one above the other all the way across my entire show. So now I've got the VFX numbers, I've got the VFX descriptions, and the next step is not always required, but can be really, really helpful to your VFX supervisors or your vendors in your team, which is to create a frame count for each of the VFX shots. So in my next video, I'm going to show you how to do a funny little workaround to create a really reliable frame count that you can use across your entire timeline and you can display the frame count for each of your VFX shots. So stay tuned. That's going to be in the next video. Thanks for watching.